in the long history of the world a human being has always been inherently a seeker a seeker to understand the world around him or her and one such process of seeking is something today we call it as science a very rational way to understand the nature and the cosmos and as part of the seeking every civilization on the face of earth has their own contributions however one such civilization whose contributions have been a very best kept secret in the history of science we are talking about bharat popularly known as india a vast majority of the contributions that came from bharat are not well known in the global scientific community or at least forgotten in the history of time and this short documentary is about one such contribution from bharat that 99% of the viewers watching this film right now and by extension majority of the people around the world were never aware of let's get started leonardo da vinci this italian genius is a very prominent personality in the history of european renaissance He's an artist, scientist, sculptor, theorist, a lot more. For most of us in Bharat, we know Leonardo da Vinci by the painting Mona Lisa or the movie The Da Vinci Code. And by any chance, you've never heard of Leonardo da Vinci. There is a fair chance that you might have watched the movie Bahubali. And remember this chariot from the movie, which has rotating blades? This war machine, the very idea of the sky chariot, that's what it is called, is drawn by Leonardo da Vinci almost more than 500 years ago. Now, if you watched the movie and you liked it, now you know where it came from. So that's da Vinci in short. Da Vinci made the blueprint of a sky chariot, what you're seeing on the screen now, the original manuscript. And this he explained about how to transpose the rotary motion of the wheel into that complex gear system attached with the blades just like how you saw in the movie and designing such a sophisticated war machine almost 500 years ago is definitely well ahead of its time during his life he made many contributions solving many problems in the fields of mathematics and physics but one problem one specific problem kept him very obsessed that's squaring a circle and it well reflects da vinci's passion about this problem and by extension the proportions of human body in this painting rather a sketch which is called as the vitruvian man now there are two things here number one is to understand the sketch and number two is the problem which i said squaring the circle we'll get to the problem a little later for a brief understanding of this sketch this sketch vitruvian man da vinci articulated the proportions of human body as you could try to check for yourself your four fingers width is equal to one palm and four palms of yours will make your foot and six palms make one cubit and six cubits will be the height of a man or a woman like this da vinci explains the proportions in a human body and this sketch holds a very important place in the history of european renaissance for many reasons but one very important reason is this is one of the earliest documentations of the idea that the art and science they interplay with each other vitruvian man is a symbol of the confluence of both arts and science this idea of the arts and science how they interplay with each other came in from europe during the period of renaissance but guess what this very aspect of the understanding of how arts and science interplay with each other and one cannot exist without the other has been very native to bharat and you'll get to know once you start exploring it the real culture and the heritage of it anyways back to da vinci well, let's talk about the problem squaring the circle the problem that kept da vinci busy here we go constructing a square with the same area as a given circle by using only a compass and a ruler within a finite number of steps that's the squaring a circle problem so basically what it means is if i give you a circle which has an area amount of x x square centimeters now just using a compass and a ruler it is almost impossible to construct a square which has exactly the same area as a circle now this is a math problem which kept mathematicians busy for well over 2000 years and if you're wondering why is it so difficult that is the only reason why i'm making this documentary now here if you observe this sketch the vitruvian man there are two things or there are two superimposed images of a same man one is standing with his feet apart and hands apart inscribed in a circle and the other one is standing with his feet closed and arms stretched making the side of a square now let me explain you in a simple manner about all this math say for instance if i give you a jug an empty jug and a small empty bucket and both have the volume of 
just one liter. Now, how are you going to verify whether the volume of the jug and the small empty bucket is exactly one liter? It's pretty simple. Take a liter full of water, pour it in the jug and then pour it in the bucket and they should be exactly filled up to the brim, right? That's how we verify the volumes of the jug and the small bucket are exactly one liter and also they are of same volume. Same way, taking a circle of any given area and constructing a square which is exactly having the same area as that of the circle. Now, how are you going to verify that? The articulation of that thought from Da Vinci is nothing but the Vitruvian man. So basically what he says is, if a man stands firm on his feet with arms stretched, forming a square where his arm length from tip of one finger to the other is exactly same as the height from head to toe. So that is one square. And when he stretches his legs and the arms, the circle that forms will also be of the same area. So this is one thought which Da Vinci tried to articulate in Vitruvian Man. This math problem of squaring a circle is one of the three classic Greek problems given by the Greek philosopher Plato. So the first of these three problems is squaring the circle, which we just saw. And the second one is doubling a cube. It means if you're given a cube of some x cubic centimeters volume, it is impossible to construct another cube which has exactly double the volume of the first cube. And the third problem is trisecting an angle. And one common constraint for all these three problems is it has to be done in finite number of steps using just a compass and a ruler. These three problems were devised by the ancient Greek philosopher Plato. And that's where Da Vinci picked up this squaring a circle problem from. Now, each of these three ancient Greek geometrical problems have their own reasons why they're impossible. The cube and the angle are not relevant for us, talking only about the squaring a circle problem. It is impossible because of the transcendence of pi. This was said by Lindemann in the late 19th century. So for almost more than 2000 years, mathematicians were busy solving this problem, but eventually it proved out to be an impossible task given the transcendental nature of pi. If you're interested, read further about the history of this problem and its mathematical background. But the most important point, what I'm trying to make since last six to seven minutes is squaring a circle has been a problem that was left unsolved for more than 2000 years. Not Plato, not Da Vinci, not Lindemann. No one was able to solve this problem with the given constraints. Of course, there are other methods which evolved over a period of time, but with the given constraints, the problem was rather unsolved for more than 2000 years. And if we cut across to Bharat, here, this problem of squaring a circle was solved a very long time ago. Since many thousands of years, this solution is being implemented for certain tasks in day-to-day -day lives of people. And now let's see what it is. Yajnam, a very important part of the ancient Indian culture. Yajnam has a very deep spiritual, philosophical and religious significance associated with it. Not just that, it has a very strong mathematical background as well, especially in the space of geometry, in constructing these fire altars, what you're seeing here on the screen. And that aspect of Yajnam, the geometry involved behind construction of these fire altars, that is our topic for now. We produced a very detailed documentary on Vedic geometry, how geometry organically evolved in ancient India. And it's one of the most comprehensive doc films that you find on the internet. And should you be interested to know more about this topic, you can find it in the link in the description. As far as this doc film is concerned, we'll stick to that specific problem of squaring a circle. But if you are interested to know more about how the geometry evolved since ancient times, the theorems, the formulas and everything, watch this doc film, the Vedic geometry. So let's get to the topic about how this problem of squaring a circle was solved in Bharat. As I said, Yajnam or Homam has been the cultural backbone of ancient India. And as part of that, there is a very special kind of ritual which needs three fire altars to be constructed, which is called as Tretagni or the Three Agni. And they look just like what you're seeing here on the screen. A circular fire altar called as Grihapatyagni, a semicircle one called as Dakshinagni, and a square one called as Ahavaniyagni. These three homakundams have to be constructed for a specific kind of a ritual. And the most important constraint that's imposed on all three fire altars is they have to be of same area. Why so? We'll get to that in a short while. But they have to be of same area. 
and there is a quite a lot of geometry involved in constructing these three fire altars and not just these three shapes there are many other shapes like falcon tortoise circle etc like i said i discussed all these in the previous doc film the vedic geometry and i'll not be touching them now so coming back to the tritagni the geometric principles that are essential to construct these fire altars are described in sulba sutras that's what it means sulba sutras are the vedic geometry theorems formulas and a lot more so for ease of identification these fall under yajur vedam and adharvada vedam and these are the vedas which explain the principles of geometry and that is how the tritagni the three fire altars will be part of a specific kind of a ritual in a yagna coming to that most important constraint which enforces that all three fire altars the square the semicircle and the circle all three should be of same area now why that constraint is imposed well honestly i did not find the answer till now maybe i have to explore more but just one anecdotal perspective that i would like to share here is all these three fire altars have to be up and burning throughout the ritual and if they are of same area you'll have a clear tap on how much amount of the sacred offerings that are being put in these three fire altars so all of these three burn equally well that's just my anecdote I'm not sure if i'm right or wrong like i said i'm still to explore and understand why that constraint is imposed nonetheless that constraint is imposed which is very important for us to understand here is another top angle view of the tritagni and this is one more picture of the tritagni So this has been a tradition since many thousands of years and today generally people think that yagnam is just a ritual or some kind of a religious event but it is not it is not just that there are a lot of mathematical principles governing these rituals and the principles of geometry involved in construction of these fire altars like i said is part of the kalpa sutras which ascribes to it's actually a vedanga ascribing to the four vedas but primarily these applications are in yajur vedam and adharvada vedam so coming to sulpa sutras it is the world's oldest applied geometry that is still in practice today and very interestingly the whole geometry is executed with rope and nails as part of this vedic geometry these are the only two equipments no compass no ruler it is just a rope and a bunch of nails so the rope in sanskritam is called as sulba and the principles of geometry are hence named as sulba sutras now getting straight to the point while constructing this tritagni you can construct a square shaped altar first and then come to a circular one or you can first start with a circular altar first and then eventually proceed towards the semicircle and square so you can choose how big a fire altar has to be according to the needs of that specific ritual at that point in time but relatively they should be of same area and to achieve this there are two formulas given by katyayana maharshi is part of katyayana sulpa sutras again how old are these a the simple answer is how old is yajur vedam that old are these formulas now if we read the first sloka mandalam chaturashram chikirshan vishkam bham pancha dasha bhagan krutva dvavud dhare cheshah karani we'll get to the translation in a minute but if you see the first three words mandalam chaturashram chikirshan mandalam means circle chaturashram is square and then the slokam goes on same way for transposing a square to a circle here as you read chaturashram mandalam chikishan and then the slokam goes on so these are the two formulas that are given to transpose a circle to a square and a square to a circle now let's get to the translation and try and solve one now let's get to the first and the most important problem squaring a circle so that's what we are discussing right from the vitruvian man up until now so squaring a circle here it is the process is take any circle of diameter d divide the diameter into 15 equal parts and then select 13 parts of this diameter and then add 1/3 of one part to it and this length of 13.3 parts forms the side of a square which has almost equal area as that of the circle this is the translation of the slokam that we just saw for transposing a circle to a square so let's take an example and then try to see how this algorithm works say i am given a circle of 15 cm diameter and i have to construct a square which has exactly the area of a circle which is of 15 cm diameter so the first step is take a circle of diameter d yes here it is 15 cm 
Now the second step is divide D into 15 equal parts. So that will be one centimeter per part. And the third step is select 13 parts of this line. So which is out of the 15 centimeters, you select 13 centimeters and then add one third of one part. So that would be 13 centimeters plus one third of a centimeter. So that gives us 13.33 centimeters. That would be the side of a square. Now if we calculate the area of a circle with diameter 15 centimeters, we'll end up with 177.772 square centimeters. And then the area of a square, which has side 13.33 centimeters is 176.714 square centimeters. And that's where we see the areas of the square and the circle are almost similar with a slight aberration. But nonetheless, considering their application back then for the purpose of a ritual, constructing the fire altars, this wasn't the exact to the decimal point kind of a compliant principle, but it served the purpose for people back then. And if you're still not satisfied with the procession, we'll talk about it in a minute. Same way for circling a square, that means taking a square of side A and constructing a circle, which is exactly of the area of a square. So another sutra is given. This one I already covered in detail in the Vedic geometry doc film. So I'll rather skip it, but just for your interest, if you'd like to try it out, you may do so. Now circling a square or squaring a circle as per Sulba Sutras, let's talk about the precession. Yes, they are not exactly same to the third or fourth decimal. There is one or two square centimeters aberration in the calculation. But looking at the purpose of these fire altars and the simplicity involved in calculating the areas, just two or three step procedure it was right what we just saw, as opposed to 2000 years old riddle that was unsolved around the world. The solution that Bharat gave for squaring a circle or circling a square is unimaginably simple and straight. Yes, of course, the transcendent nature of pi doesn't allow us to achieve squaring a circle or circling a square with the compass and ruler as given by Plato, the constraints. But precision matters where it really matters. In these applications, that level of precision with such a simple formula, it does the job. But if you're really concerned about the precession and pi, then let's talk about something else. The concept of pi has intrigued many civilizations around the world. Every civilization had their contribution in evolution of pi. But one breakthrough contribution to pi changed the game completely. While people were busy solving and adding one decimal after other to the pi, Madhavacharya of Sangramagrama, back in 14th century, he devised a formula to calculate the pi up until infinite number of digits. And he explained this in a small slokam like it's shown above here. So he says that pi is equal to 4 multiplied by an alternating series of 1 minus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 5 minus 1 by 7 plus 1 by 9 and so on. This formula for pi has completely changed the game because now you can calculate pi to the precession that you want. And also this is the first time in the history of mathematics that a finite quantity like pi was expressed in infinite series laying the stepping stone for calculus, integration by parts, almost 300 years before Newton and Leibniz. And this series, what you're seeing now, the value of pi, it is called as Madhava Gregory series, even today. So where did we start? Precision matters where it matters. And here Madhava made this value so precise because here pi is used for astronomical calculations and it matters a lot. But rolling back to Sulba Sutras, like I said, given the application, it simply does the job. So that's how squaring a circle, a problem that pestered mathematicians for 2000 years, right from Plato, Leonardo da Vinci, and reflected in the Vitruvian Man. That's how this riddle was solved in Bharat many thousands of years earlier. Let me set the record straight. By no means whatsoever, we're trying to belittle Plato or Leonardo da Vinci or any other intellectual for that matter. Neither are we going jingoistic about Bharat, its Vedic culture and the Sulva Sutras. The only point is the scientific heritage of Bharat was not known to the global scientific community, especially the youth of India. And this is our very small attempt to bring forward all these kinds of great stories, which are true, authentic and factual. And for a quick touch and go, here is Bhujakoti Karaninyayam, also known as Pythagorean Theorem, 
formulated by Maharshi Baudhayana back in 800 BC, conservatively placed again. So he could be much older than that. And this principle was given much before even Pythagoras was born. Dirga Chaturas Rakshanya Rajjuhu Parshvamani Triyang Manicha Yatat Prudhak Bhute Kurutas Tadubayam Karoti. What it says is, in a rectangle, the area formed by the square of a base and a height is equal to the area formed by the diagonal. This again has been in practice in India since thousands of years as part of a special kind of homum where triangular bricks are fabricated using this principle. What you're seeing in the picture here, the triangular bricks using this principle of Bhujakoti Karani Nyayam. Let me tell you the irony here, and no disrespect to Pythagoras. It is popular as Pythagorean theorem, but Pythagoras never wrote this. It's Euclid who did it, and there was no written record that Pythagoras did discover this particular formula. On the other side, in Bharat, as part of Yajurvedam, the Kalpa Sutras and Sulba Sutras, written and passed down since hundreds of generations and still in practice, and it wouldn't be a surprise that 95% of Indians never heard of the word Sulba Sutras or the Vedic geometry. Ask yourselves a question, why? As a quick side note, let me tell you something. The Yajnam as a ritual is very interesting because it holds certain very ancient practices. The geometry is a lot more evolved today, but still, when it comes to construction of these fire altars, the modern day tapes and scales will not be used. They still stick to using this age-old tradition of applying these very ancient geometric principles. And that's how the fire altars are constructed till today. And here is a quick example. Homum needs fire, right? And that fire will not be taken from a math stick or something like that. In a very ancient and natural manner, there is something called as arani. It's an equipment that's used in homum. So they drill the pieces of wood together and that friction will generate the fire which is eventually used for homum. This is the only method through which fire is generated. For reference, it's just like how Russell Crowe did in the Castaway movie, if you remember. So this practices, the ancient practices which are still alive in a yajnam, shows us this ancient traditions where it all started. Be it Leonardo da Vinci or Katyayana Maharshi, they have contributed greatly to the betterment of humanity in their own rights. Squaring a circle is just one drop in the ocean of the contributions that came from Bharat. Yet, on the global scientific stage and the communities, we never hear these stories. And for us in Project Shivoham, it gives immense pleasure in researching these topics and bringing forward to light, which are factual and authentic in nature. And as always, thanks for watching.